All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, I often have the privilege of recognizing heroes in our city that wear the uniform, uh, but today it's a little bit different. Many of you may know that a few months ago, uh, Greg Franick woke up to the horror of an unexpected fire, and instead of turning and run running, he selflessly decided to stay and help other people, neighbors, and made sure people got out. There is no doubt in my mind that you saved lives that evening. So it's an honor to be here with you and recognize your actions. Uh, thanks for coming, and I'll turn it over to Mayor Glasser. Thank you so much, Mayor Curry. Uh, we really appreciate you doing this, and we also ours and the JFRD for all of the great work that they do in our community. Um, and we don't often get a chance to say thank you to the city and to uh, the, the department for what they do. I'd like to first just mention that Greg is with us today, along with Henry Bishop, who is one of the folks that Greg saved that night. Uh, Greg wouldn't be here, I mean, Henry wouldn't be here with us if it weren't for Greg. We're also joined by our chief of police in Atlantic Beach, Vic Walilo, and our city manager, Shane Corbin. So today, here in the front row, we are Greg's family. He has no other family members. He's lived in Atlantic Beach for over 30 years. He's well known to many. He doesn't have a car. He rides his bike everywhere. Uh, and he was living happily in this multi-family uh, apartment building in Atlantic Beach when this fire uh, started on June the 7th. So without regard for himself, uh, he woke up, his throat was dry, and he was concerned about his neighbors because that's just the way we are in a small town like Atlantic Beach. And so he went to work banging on doors, making phone calls, throwing bricks, and awakening his neighbors so that they would survive. Um, had he not done so, we would have been dealing with a much worse case scenario. So Greg is our ultimate first responder and a hero to be recognized. So I'm so pleased that you're all here today. Uh, there's more to know about Greg. Um, Greg is actually awaiting a kidney transplant. Uh, we had to schedule this event around his dialysis schedule. He goes three days a week. Um, his doctor told him that there's a reason he survived the fire, and that's to get a new kidney. Um, Greg does not have great means. Uh, given his life situation and all that he lost in that fire. And, and I know he probably doesn't want me to say this, but he did give me permission. Uh, a GoFundMe page has been set up to help Greg get back on his feet, uh, and we can provide you that link if, if anyone is interested in helping one of our local heroes. I'm really pleased to be with all of you today, and I don't want to steal Chief Powers' thunder, so I'm going to now uh, have him come up. Thank you so much. Well, good afternoon and thank y'all for coming. You know, <clears throat> Mayor Curry ran in 2015 on a public safety platform and ma it has made it his priority in every budget since then. And, uh, you know, Greg is kind of living up to that theme. He looks out for his neighbors and without his help, I talked to the, uh, actually talked to the crew at Engine 55, who was the first engine on scene on this call. And they told me that uh, if, if, he had, if he hadn't have done what he did, that we would have had some tragedy that night. And so he is a true first responder and, and living up to what Mary Curry preaches to us every day about public safety. Um, he saved lives that night. But what I'm here to say today is it's time for us to step up and help save his life now. We as a community need some folks to get tested, uh, go to Mayo Clinic, use his name and get tested and let's find him a kidney and, uh, and help save his life. He helped save others, now it's our turn to help save his. You know, um, I think I think if I remember right, he lived in that apartment for 22 years, and uh, now he is he is you know living with friends and family around in the Atlantic Beach area. But we also need to help with this GoFundMe page and help help get him a place to stay. And then again, the main focus here is to uh, to help him get a kidney. So, if you're able, please go to Mayo and and get tested. Uh, I think it's O positive blood that we need you to have, and we're gonna we're gonna work on this till we find him a kidney. With that, I'd like to bring him up here. Uh, JFRD has some awards that we give to civilians when they go above and beyond. And um, we have, uh, we're gonna give him an award this afternoon and it's the uh, Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Award of Merit with Civilian Life Saving Award. So Greg, if you wanna come up, I'll be honored to be able to present this to you.
Okay, I'm not much for saying anything. I'm usually the one that's in the background. I don't like all this attention. Uh, what I did for Henry and my other two friends, they're my friends. I would think any of you would do the same thing, but as I was told by other people, a lot of people nowadays would just go run and care about themselves or their property. That didn't matter. I'm one, I, with Mr. Henry here, he was the last one I got out, and I had to get a brick to break his door a little so I could get him because he would not answer because he was way upstairs all the way to the back of the house. And just by looking in, all the smoke I saw, I knew it wasn't going to be good. So I just want to say thank you for this. It means a lot, but I didn't do it for this reason. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have any questions? <coughs> To be honest with you, I, it's not about me. This is about Greg, and and I don't recall a lot about it other than, you know, it was a terrifying night. Um, I'm just thankful that I heard what I heard and somehow got out. And if it weren't for Greg, I wouldn't be here standing for you today. That's that's a fact. So that's all I can really tell you. Oh, 100 percent, for sure. I mean, there's just there's I can't express the gratitude I have for for what he did for me. That's all I can say, really. <clears throat> well, just, just reliving it is, is, is a challenge, to be honest with you. <clears throat> and then listening to see, you know, hear, hearing what Greg did is, 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 is reliving it again. So, yeah, it's, a, it's been an interesting few months, to say the least. And uh, to be thankful to be standing here is, is, is hard to explain. <laughs> well, interestingly, I met Greg probably when I first moved to town as he's a, he was a resident of that house who, who was owned by a good friend of mine. So I've known Greg for probably 13 years or so. <clears throat> and I was fortunate to be able to move into that place and, and become Greg's, uh, uh, not roommate, but, but sort of housemate. And, and we, were, we became even closer friends at that point. So... <clears throat> Okay, I've been yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been on uh, dialysis now two and a half years. With O positive, which is the most common blood type there is, they said the weight here, which is a good weight, would be up to five years. So that means for me to stay alive, okay, and I'll be honest with you, I'll tell you this in a minute. I have to go every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I have to be in the chair by 6 a.m., and I go until 10 o'clock. That's how long it takes for all your blood to go out of your system and back in. I have what is called a um, AB fistula in my arm, which they put the two plugs in. Now, if I decided, and I, I'll be honest, I was in a dark spot right after the fire because I'm like, I can't take anymore. I'm waiting for a kidney. I'm on dialysis. I just lost everything. I didn't even have shoes that morning I ran out. I had a pair of shorts on and a T-shirt. That's all I had left. If I would have missed five days in a row of dialysis, I just wouldn't wake up. What it is, it's the toxins build up in your body. When you don't have your kidneys functioning to urinate, all your toxins stay in your body, and that's what kills people. So I, I could have easily just said, I'm done with it. But then I said, you know, I got too much to live for. And, and uh, you know, you were asking about the fire. Let me just tell you real quick. I woke up at 1.30, I had fallen asleep watching TV, and I don't know if any of you will realize this, but when you fall asleep with no lights on in your living room, just a TV, there's a glow in your living room. 
while my glasses had fallen off, and I'm blind without them. So I got up, and I'm like, wow, my eyes are bad. I'm getting older. I need to get them checked. Put my glasses on, and I'm like, okay, look at the hair on my arms. I'm like, this isn't right. So I picked up my phone off the coffee table. That's the only reason that's with me. And I looked in the living room, nothing. But when I turned around to go to the kitchen, I couldn't even see my kitchen. The smoke was white, billowing up from the floor. So I made my way to the steps, ran down, knocked on the door. That apartment was totally filled with smoke. Jody was at her boyfriend's at the other place. I got them out. Then I went to get Henry. He was the one I was most concerned about because his place, there's the living room downstairs and the kitchen. Then you go up steps and all the way towards the beach is his bedroom. So it's the furthest away. I'm pounding, pounding, pounding. Finally, I said, screw it, Greg. I went and I got a brick. He had a glass door. I was ready to break it. Well, I guess I was so nervous and upset. The first time I hit the brick, it hit the building, and it vibrated really loud. And I hear him say, what? And that's when I told him in unspecific words, get up. There's a damn fire. He came down, and I remember him grabbing me. He goes, my eyes, I can't see. By that time, the flames are shooting out in front of me as we go down the sidewalk. And God love them, and I'm not saying nothing against them. There's a police officer at the end with a flashlight. Hurry up. I'm like, okay, you got the flashlight in my eyes. I got a guy holding me, and I got the flames this way. Put the flashlight towards the ground. He said, sorry, sorry. And as I did, all of a sudden, I heard the whole thing just go up in like a timber box. It just went whoosh. And that's all I remembered. And then I, I broke down. I, that's when I realized how bad it was. So that's, that's it. So Greg has an amazing story. I just will say that one of the one of the rules he laid out for me today is that he had to leave his phone on in yeah. case he got the call for the transplant. So um, he's been elevated in terms of um, maybe consideration. So we're optimistic that maybe something will come yeah, because... come through soon. But uh, to get a transplant, you have to have a stable living situation so that people can check on you. And that's one of the things that maybe you or I wouldn't think about um, when you're trying to find new housing. He needs a stable housing environment. And of course, he had, doesn't have a home now. But, but anyway, Greg's a hero. So thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's under investigation still, so I can't say what, what caused it. The state's still looking at it, but uh, it was a uh, very large fire um, that took a lot of JFRD resources to put out. And, of course, we had a uh, pretty strong wind that night also coming off the ocean, which intensified those flames, but it was a very, very large fire. We would classify it as, uh, did it go second alarm? It went second alarm. Uh, about 75 would be a second alarm assignment. A lot of folks, a lot of resources. So if I can encourage one last thing, uh, I know we talked about him, you know, that he's been elevated, but again, if I can just get y'all to help us get the message out that we need people to get in this community to step up and help us help save his life and get tested, go to Mayo and get tested and see if you're a, a compatible donor for uh, for Greg. It's uh, It would be a, a huge win for this community to be able to save his life like he did those other folks. Thank you. Good to see you.